Welcome to Pastor's Chat today. Well, today we're going to try to finish Psalm 105. We've come down to the last four verses. And in these verses, we read this. For he, that's speaking of God, for he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. He brought out his people with joy, his chosen ones with gladness. He gave them the lands of the Gentiles and they inherited the labor of the nations that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, we need to remember that Psalm 105 is a historical psalm that reminded the people of Israel as they came back out of captivity in Babylon to the promised land how God keeps his promises. Over and again, God remembered. We finish here, and God remembered his holy promise. That holy promise, if you study through the Bible, began way back in Genesis chapter 12, where God told Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation, and in you all the nations of the earth will be blessed. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 13, God said to Abraham, know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, that's Egypt, and will serve them, and they will afflict them 400 years. And also the nation whom they serve, I will judge afterwards, they shall come out with great possessions. And that was a promise God made, specifically saying how long Israel would be in the land of Egypt, 400 years. Now, what we learn today is God keeps his promises. He kept his promises as you go through this chapter through Joseph to prepare a man before them who kept them alive during the famine. Then down in Egypt, God prepared a man, Moses, and his brother Aaron, who led the nation out. And this chapter goes through the history of all that. And then he concludes with, God remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. Even when the people of Israel went back into the land under Nehemiah to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, the longest prayer in the Old Testament, in Nehemiah chapter 9, they literally pray this same words, how God made this promise to Abraham and kept this promise to bring him out of the people of Israel out of Egypt. My friend, we are a people of God that lives on the promises of God, not explanations. God doesn't have to explain to us why this happened or that happened. Man, do you feel today like everyone is against you? You feel like the whole world is caving in around you? My friend, I'm telling you, Maybe it seems like everyone has failed you. Nobody's there to help you. As the psalmist said on one occasion, no man cared for my soul. But I want you to know, despite what it appears to be on the outside around us, God keeps his promises. Jesus said in John chapter 14, you believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again that where I am, there you may be also. You don't know the way? He says, I'm the way. You don't know the truth? I'm the truth. He says, you want to have life? I am the life, and I've come to give it to you more abundantly. My friend, God keeps his promises. Matter of fact, in the book of Joshua, after the people went back into the land of Canaan and inherited the land, they had to fight for it. But God went before them, defeated the enemy's armies. And it says again in the book of Joshua, at least on two occasions, Joshua 21, 45, Joshua 23, 14, not a good word that the Lord had promised failed. He kept every word that he had promised to the nation of Israel as they went back to inherit the land. My friend, today, as you read these verses, and that's what these last verses are about, they don't talk, this whole chapter doesn't talk about the failures of Israel, the golden calf, and the murmuring and the complaining when there wasn't water. It, God doesn't remember our failures. He remembers his promises, and he keeps them that's what this chapter reminds us. And then why? That they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise the Lord. We have an obligation. 
when we remember how God keeps his promises to obey him, to love him, and live for him. That's how the chapter ends. Well, my friend, God bless you. Let's say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And it's my prayer that you will have today a wonderful, wonderful day. God bless.